Hey there, traders. Welcome back to your daily trading and market recap. The levels you see on this chart of the SPY will be our baseline for entering trades in the E-mini futures today during the open session. That is the symbol ES, and we're currently trading the December contract. Check out the description below to learn more about the mission of this channel and some background on this trading strategy. My name is Sam. Today is the Ides of October, Tuesday, October 15, 2024. It is about 10 minutes in front of 8 o'clock Eastern currently. So far in the overnight session, price has stayed mostly flat. The lower of the light blue lines, there are two of them, the lower is around where the SPY closed yesterday. They have stayed around that level up to this point. They can still climb. Don't forget that the overall trend and big picture is still bullish, and I haven't seen any obvious signals of a possible trend change. But that being said, it is not probable that price will continue this way without some sort of pullback eventually. So could it be that they're trying to roll over a little right now? Or is this a consolidation that will resume in the upward direction? Those are the questions I have for today. The upper light blue line is simply the high from yesterday that if they get above and start closing candles above, I would consider that to be indicative of a continued bullish push. At least the bulls would have the upper hand for a while longer. So that being said, I'm treating the levels shown in the light blue lines as sort of my axis levels for the day. If they can get above 585.28 and maintain closes above there, there is no reason that they can't keep climbing. If price gets below 584.30 and maintain closes below, the bears could have more on the downside. Also, I see no data releases of significance scheduled today, just another Tuesday, perhaps. So unless the market is acting out of character, I would typically expect reactions at the other levels. And once again, we have a zone near the top of our chart this morning, and there is more than one level above that area that could also act as overhead resistance. I just included the top one at 588.80 because I believe it's more important than the interim levels that you don't see. We'll come back to this chart after the closing bell, talk about any trades that may have resulted from the SPY hitting these levels. Again, the trades are taken in the E-mini futures. Catch you on the other side. And we're back. The closing bell was a while ago. You can see the current time down here. Yes, it's after midnight, another busy day. So we got the pullback we talked about that might happen. True to form, once price got below what I called the bear axis this morning, they got more bearish and price was pushed down for almost all day. So could you have made money trading the E-minis based on the levels that we identified in the spiders this morning? Yes, you could have, and here's how. The first trade would have been right after 9.45. They were above this level of 5.8430. Either you would have added the five cent buffer to the level or bought at the market right at the 15 minute mark after the opening bell. And the bounce right here was enough to pull a base hit of four points, four ES points. So one profitable trade in the bag before 10 a.m. Once they got below this level, you're either looking for a recycle of this same level from the underside if they got there the right way, or you're looking at the levels farther down. Since you would have known this level here at the five 84.30 was the bear axis. It shouldn't have been too surprising to see them fall once the bears established dominance under this level. I actually shorted under this level, wrote it down for a while. Not something I normally do, but the writing was on the wall. So strictly playing by the rules, you would have bought E-mini contracts the moment the SPY hit 582.50. That's as adjusted with a five cent buffer. No reaction at this time. So you'd plan to add to that position if they got down to the next level, but unfortunately they got within two pennies of 581.27. That's the operating level. They got 587.29 was the low. So that's a near miss. So this level would not have been activated. So this level would not have activated another order, strictly speaking. I happen to have a limit order on the E-mini chart right before this level, so I was filled. So it was easy for me to pull a base hit with my average entry point, which was in the middle. But if you were only in at this level up here, if you went long at 582.50, you would have not been given four ES points even when they got back into the money. They came up short. So there's really no reason to change course during this trade, even uh, while you were out of the money down here. This kind of market behavior can kind of be tricky to trade sometimes. But I found that if price comes up within a certain threshold of your profit objective like this, 
So just pennies away. And then a few minutes later, it's back down at your entry point. The market could be telling you that this was only an interim bounce and price is probably headed lower. That's what I call a near miss of the profit objective up here. So the safest thing to do is bail out when the price is back at your entry point. So essentially a wash. So what we have is this level at 582.50 satisfied on the long side, still valid for a recycle trade if they get back up into it from the other side the right way. But meanwhile, this level down here at 581.27 is kind of a toss up if they come back to it again. Because you probably know by now, I don't like to take trades the second time they hit. So just to keep things consistent, I'm not counting to this trade. This would have worked quite well because this, the market thought the level was still important. But when they got back up, so anyway, this is not a trade because that was it right here. But when they got back up to 582.50, now it's actually 582.40 as adjusted. We're bringing price five cents down toward price. That This is good for a recycle trade on the short side this time. Enough time had passed from the last time they got below this level right here. So four E-mini points or more was very easy to pull out if you traded this level from the other side, just like this, around 12, 33, 34 or so. Again, I would ignore 581.27, this area, when price got back down to it, because I usually like to trade a level one time. But as you can see, this level is important. They bounced again, even the third time. I just want to point out that the market thought it was important. So when the spiders got down to the next level lower, it was right around, right after 3 p.m. So at this time of day, when the market has been in a trend day down, I probably wouldn't want to risk taking a long trade just in case I kind of got stuck in something near the end of the open session. I actually did not take this trade myself, but playing by the rules, we're going to say that you did get into a long position right here at 579.90 as adjusted. So they got out of the money pretty quickly. They would have given a signal to reverse. And at that point, in doing so, you would have given six points back to the market. And they got a base hit of four points or more as they continued lower. So mostly a wash. So officially two base hits and one small fumble. And as we'll see on the tracking log, the day did end in the green with these trades per the rules of the strategy. Here is a recording of my trade. This is about a minute after I got set up, so I missed. This is not 10.09, almost 10.10 a.m. I missed the first trade here we talked about. This would have been 5.84.35. They bounced from that level right after 9.45. You can see the time. But I'll start playing this because when they got underneath this level, this is when I just went short with one contract, and I put a profit target, kind of a, a destination down here above the next level down. I, I adjusted it later, you'll see. But but ultimately, I got several points. I think it was like 14 points out of this trade. And it's not again, it's not something I normally do, but the writing was on the wall. So I adjusted it to however many points. This is 14 points, so $700. And then I went long at the next level. And you'll see the limit order here got filled. So I want to point something out here. So... I took one contract off, but the trailer of like six or seven points, it was some kind of glitch or something because what you see actually is not what really happened. I'm not sure. So you'll see I, I got $281.25, but then this is not where my my entry price was. So it says it looks here like they came down and I got $400 in the remaining part of that contract. That was not the case. It was actually a total of 20, I think, one points. So not... That adds up to $1,300, which you just saw. It was actually $1,100. So not sure what happened there, but the reality is for trading one contract at this level down here or under this level down, trading one contract to this level for a bounce, which didn't happen, averaged in down here with one contract and got a total, a net total of 22 points. So I just want to point out that when they got down to 579.85, I'd already made the decision not to enter that trade. So when they got close, I made sure this recording was going just to, you know, as proof that I didn't enter this trade at three or after three o'clock. So here it is. And at some point I'm hovering over here, C580.30, that's 40 cents above. I just wanna see, well, would they have bounced at this point or at some point after this trade would have been entered had I taken the trade? Just I'm just doing this to see, was it a bad decision not to take the trade? But I kind of like the fact that I didn't take the trade, which, like I said earlier, you know, in a trend day down, I'm not sure at this time of day I'm willing to take a trade, 3 o'clock. Definitely not after 3.30, but anyway, nothing really more to see here. This goes out right up to about 3.30 or so, and then I stopped this recording, so you know, 
didn't take this trade. That would have been the profit objective. Clearly, it was not hit. On the daily chart, you can see what this looks like. And let's kind of, we're going to drill in a little bit deeper to see where they ended. So they're still above all the moving averages on this daily chart. It's not until you get down to, I think, the uh, two hour chart. So here's 120 minutes. This is where they bounce off the 20 period moving average. That's kind of where they, they stalled out. And you start to see here, there's like what I would call a breakout area. So you can see this a little bit more clearly on the one hour chart. So here, this area right here. I would consider a zone in this general area. You got a gap right here, the close of this day, whatever day this was, uh, October 11. So that's a, a gap that needs to be filled or will be filled at some point. And then just this whole general area is going to be a zone that they could bounce from. Well, they got below it and they've closed one hour candle below. And this next hourly candle, they closed at 579.79. The gap was 579.55. So not a whole lot, not, not very much higher than the close from this gap here. So, and then all the other uh, time frames that I track below one hour, they're below you know, moving averages. They get down to like even a five minute chart. Not that that's very important compared to an hourly or a daily chart, but just to point out where they're at. So, yeah, they could definitely go lower, but this is a good area for them to find some type of support for a bounce up. But, you know, we've been talking about some type of pullback, and we're going to see by tomorrow morning with the, the overnight session and do some numbers and run some numbers to see if perhaps they're going to go lower or if this is a place that they could find some type of support and bounce again and continue higher. We'll find out tomorrow morning, but that's kind of just a quick look at some of the longer time frames to see where they might be going in the near term. And also just to point out the volume did increase somewhat. I'll go back to a daily chart here just to show you that finally, let's reset this. Finally, you got above the 90 period moving average of the volume here, just barely. But, you know, they've been below quite a bit. So usually I like to see volume spike quite a bit to indicate something else is going on. This is just just a pullback. That's all it is on this daily chart. There's nothing bearish at face value. It's not until you get down to the smaller time frames that things start to look maybe bearish. But that's only on those time frames. On the tracking logs, the first one, the PBR, playing by the rules log. You can read the notes. Essentially two base hits, one fumble of which six points was given back to the market, a base on the reversal of that fumble. So you would have gained 12 points, given six back, and there's the profit potentials based on number of contracts traded. And my trades were this. They essentially all three levels were a base hit. One contract at each level, 14 points for the first one. Just kind of wrote that down. A little unorthodox, but as you can see, it worked out quite well. I averaged in these lower two levels, essentially uh, net eight points with a one contract trade at each level. To 22 points. So that's a wrap for today. We had some good setups. The writing was on the wall that they probably were going to go lower once they got below that bear axis. So it's all about sticking to the plan, trusting in the levels. If you found value in today's recap, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss a daily update like this. And drop a comment if you have any questions or you want to share your own trading wins. I know a number of you had these levels from the morning. I send these out every morning via email to my pre-subscribers. And I'm curious if you made money today. You should have had a fair chance of earning something. So I love hearing from you guys and getting feedback. And if you're curious about getting these levels, then just head over to ticksandtrades.com and just enter your information in and I'll add you to my list. Thanks again for watching. Talk with you tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day.